Well, first of all, you can't retroactively be, how can you, how can you do anything retroactively? Penalties and interest are a farce. The whole thing, because they do whatever they want to do. And that's when I realized America is not America. It's not the land that I was taught it was. Because they can do whatever they wish to do. And there's nothing the citizen can do about it. Now, you've made America Freedom of Fascism. I want to walk through that film, and I want to encourage everybody out there to, to uh, get a copy of it on DVD. It was also in theaters around the country. And the, I think the best film out there on the Federal Reserve and the IRS and the whole banker scam, and I want to discuss that with you here. Uh, but I wanted to uh, go back a little bit uh, to the point that we discussed uh, last night where you don't advise people to not pay. And I do the same thing. People say, well, wait, you're saying it's a scam, but you're saying go ahead and pay it. And I like the way you summed it up. Well, it's really fairly simple. I mean, uh, since making that movie, you know, many people come to me and ask me whether they should pay their income taxes or not, you know, and I never advise people not to pay. And the reason I, I tell them, I say, look, I've done a lot of research. There isn't, the Supreme Court has ruled that the IRS has no authority. The 16th Amendment did not give the IRS the authority to tax your labor and your wages. That's a fact. All right. The Supreme Court is the law of the land, you know, and, and, the, and the IRS does not trump the Supreme Court. However, that being the case, the fact is, if the mafia would come to you and say, we want $2,000 a month that we're going to hurt you, I would not advise you not to pay them, because you may get hurt by not paying them. Whether it's legal or not, doesn't necessarily matter. You're going to get hurt if you don't. It's the same thing with the IRS. They can hurt you. They can put you in jail. They can torture you. So if you don't pay them, you may get hurt. So I never advise people not to pay. You know, I tell people, yeah, pay your taxes. Look what happened to Congressman Hansen. Yeah, Congressman Hansen is a great example. Pay your taxes. But you know what? Shut down the Federal Reserve System, and eventually you won't have to pay those taxes anymore. See, the, the, the IRS is a symptom of the problem. The real problem is the banking industry and the bankers in this country. That's where the real problem lies. That's the root of our problem. That's why we've lost America. Okay? So, yeah, pay your taxes. Because if you don't pay them, you might get hurt. And I've heard all the arguments, you know, uh, how, what tax protesters say and so on and so forth. And I don't call them tax protesters. I call them the tax honesty movement. Because they're being honest, you know, at least. But the fact of the matter is, you, you're being forced, you're being compelled to pay it because you're facing jail sentences, you're facing time, you're facing corruption of the courts if you don't pay, right? And so you pay it, because you just like you'd pay the mafia. But with the mafia, at least you have the government to call and try and help you to get past the mafia, to protect you. Here you have nobody to protect you. The, the, the American people are living in a matrix. They don't understand the truth of how things are working in this country, you know? And let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. The very fact is that if you, if you ask 100 people on the street, what kind of government is America supposed to be? 99% of them will tell you a democracy. America is supposed to be a democracy. But that's a lie. That's an illusion. The word democracy is not written into the Constitution at one time. It's not in the Bill of Rights. It's not in the Declaration of Independence. The Founding Fathers hated the idea of a democracy. They thought it was the worst form of government there is. And I agree with them. Because in a democracy, 51% of the people control 49% of the people. If you're part of the 49%, you're not free. America was founded as a constitutional republic. And in that constitutional republic that we have, 99% of the people can't take away the rights of 1%. You have your rights because you were born with them. You have God-given human rights that nobody can take away from you. The government, the majority, no matter who they are, I can't take away your rights. And that's what, that's, that's what our founding fathers gave us. But the psychological operations that they, that they do to us, they make us believe that we're a democracy and that majority rules, you see? And they want you to believe that. Because then they tell you this poll says this many want this and this many want that and this many want this and it doesn't have anything to do with anything. Well, Hitler was elected. Hitler was elected. Hitler did everything legally. And in a re constitutional republic, a minority is pro is protected against a majority. Wasn't it Benjamin Franklin, a paraphrase, that said democracy is two wolves and a sheep voting on what's for dinner? Exactly. And then he also said in a republic, the sheep would have a gun <laughs> 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 to protect himself. You know, and that's, that's, that's the truth. America is not a democracy. But you ask the most intelligent people what form of government America is supposed to be, they'll say a democracy. Because that's, that's what they've been brainwashed. 
They've been psyoped into believing that. They believe that we're in Iraq. They believe we're in Iraq to promote democracy. The word democracy, you hear George Bush saying democracy means freedom. No, democracy equals new world order. Democracy equals slavery. The word democracy is not synonymous with freedom. It's the opposite of freedom. Democracy is the worst form of government you can have because it's majority rule. And the government can tell you exactly what they want to tell you to do. Because the, the majority wants it. I don't care what the majority wants. I live my life as I choose. And if I don't commit violence, theft, or fraud against another human being, I can live my life as I wish. That's my choice. And if I'm allowed to make mistakes, because when you make mistakes, you learn from them. You grow as a human being. We're put on this earth to become the best individuals we can be to fulfill our God-given potential, right? We're not here to put on this earth so that the government can tell us how to live our lives and what we must do. We put into these systems and these paradigms. No. The same thing in health. You know, if you're sick, you have to have a certain protocol. Nonsense. You know, be individuals. Think for yourself. Have critical thinking, you know? And so what's happened is that because they've taught everybody that we're a democracy, which is not true, now, so then in 1913, they bring the Federal Reserve System into being, right? And now you have this Federal Reserve System, which then in 1913 got the right to create money for the government, when before that the government created its own money. Now, now the government, when it needed money, had to borrow it from this private bank called the Federal Reserve, which is a private bank owned by individuals, incorporated in Delaware. And so um, what happens is now the government borrows money from them to fund the government. Then the government says, well, we have to pay these people interest. How are we going to pay them interest? Let's impose a tax on the labor of the American people, which never existed before, to pay the interest to the bankers. In fact, in 1980, Ronald Reagan said not one red cent uh, of your income tax money goes to run the country, it all goes to the Federal Reserve. Well, it, go, what the, it was the Grace Commission report that said that uh, all the, not one nickel goes to the infrastructure of the country. You know? Uh, I guess Reagan quoted that then. Right. So. And so, um, but the point, the, point I'm, the point I'm trying to make is that by creating this Federal Reserve system, the government now became dependent on these private banks for money. And they started take, taxing us. You see, and so now, now what happens is that um, in '35, I believe it was, Social Security started, and they gave Social Security cards said not to be used for identification, the Social Security number right on the card, right? And through Social Security, they started deducting money out of your out of your paycheck. That was the first time they were ever take, could take money out of your paycheck, because people agreed to it because they thought it was going to the retirement fund. And so then when they instituted the income tax again, they started taking money out of your paycheck because Social Security could do it. So then, then they could do it again. You see what I'm saying? And so now they've even taken control of the tax, the, the tax payment itself. I mean, literally like you're a slave, they're right. taking it right there when you make it. Exactly. They don't even trust the public enough to, to go and them pay Send them a check. You know? Right. So they take it out automatically because they know people aren't going to want to pay it. So what's happened is that through the implementation of the Federal Reserve System, the government has become uh, vested in these bankers, and they get their money from the bankers. And so then they impose a tax on us, which makes us more slaves, makes it more difficult for us to survive, right? Giving them more profits. And now what's happened is that uh, through the, the, the Federal Reserve System, the bankers have pretty much taken control of our government. It doesn't matter Republican and Democrat anymore, because they're both the same. Neither one of them are talking about shutting down the Federal Reserve System or stopping the payment of taxes, you know, uh, or any of the big issues that face Americans, right? So uh, I had a friend, Nick Rockefeller, okay, who was one of the Rockefeller family, and he, uh, uh, when I was running for governor in Nevada, he came to me, introduced himself to me through an attorney, and uh, we became friends. We started talking about things, and... Um, I learned an awful lot from Mr. Rockefeller. And one of the things that we used to talk about was the ultimate plan of the banking industry, what they wanted to accomplish. And the goals of the uh, 